I have to go there briefly just to get your kind of thoughts in the long-term future of robotics. Uh, there's been discussions on the GPT side, on the large language model side, of whether there's consciousness inside these language models. And I think there's fear, but I think there's also excitement, or at least the wide world of opportunity and possibility in embodied robots having something like Let's start with emotion, uh, love towards other human beings, and uh, perhaps the display, real or fake, of consciousness. Is this something you think about in terms of long, long-term future? Because as you, as we've talked about, people do anthropomorphize these robots. Uh, it's difficult not to project some level of, uh, I use the word sentience, some level of uh, sovereignty, identity, all the things we think as human. That's what anthropomorphization is, is we project humanness onto mo mobile, especially legged robots. Um, is that something almost from a science fiction perspective you think about, or do you try to avoid ever, you try to avoid the topic of consciousness altogether? I'm certainly not an expert in it, and I don't spend <laughs> a lot of time thinking about this, right? Um, and I do think it's fairly remote for the machines that that we're dealing with. Um, our robots, you're right, the people anthropomorphize, they, they read into the robot's intelligence and emotion that isn't there because they see physical gestures that are similar to things they might even see in people or animals. Um, I don't know much about how these large language models really work. I, I believe it's a kind of statistical uh, averaging of the most common responses, you know, to a series of words, right? It's it's sort of uh, uh, a, a very elaborate uh, uh, word completion. Um, and I'm dubious that that has uh, anything to do with consciousness. Um, and I, I even wonder if that model of sort of simulating consciousness by, by stringing words together that are statistically associated with one another. Um, whether or not that kind of knowledge, if you want to call that knowledge, um, would be the kind of knowledge that allowed a sentient being to grow or evolve. It feels to me like there's, there's something about truth or emotions that's just a very different kind of knowledge that is that is absolute. Like a, the, the interesting thing about truth is it's absolute, and it doesn't matter how frequently it's represented in the World Wide Web. Mm -hmm. It's if you know it to be true, it, it can only be. It may only be there once, mm -hmm. but by God, it's true. And, and I think emotions are a little bit like that too. You know something, uh, you know, and 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 I just think that's a different kind of knowledge than the way these large language models uh, derive sort of simulated. It does seem that the things that are true um, very well might be statistically well represented on the on the internet because the internet is made up of humans. So I tend to suspect that large language models are going to be able to simulate consciousness very effectively. And I actually believe that current GPT-4, when fine-tuned correctly, would be able to do just that. And that's going to be a lot of very complicated ethical questions that have to be dealt with. They have nothing to do with robotics. They have and everything to do with... There needs to be some process of labeling, I think, what is true. Because, because there is also disinformation available on the web. And these models are going to consider that kind of information as well. And again, you can't average something that's true and something that's untrue and get something that's moderately true. <laughs> it's either right or it's wrong. And so how, how is that process? And, and, and this is obviously something that the purveyors of these, BARD and ChatGPT, that I'm sure this is what they're working on. Well, if you interact on some controversial topics with these models, they're actually refreshingly nuanced. They present because there's, there's, you, you realize there's no one truth. You know, uh, what caused the war in Ukraine, right? 
uh, any geopolitical conflict. You can ask any kind of question, especially the ones that are politically uh, uh, tense, divisive, and so on. It, GPT is very good at presenting. Here's the like. Here's the. It presents the different hypotheses. It pre presents calmly sort of mm. the the amount of evidence for each one. It's very. It's really refreshing. It makes you realize that truth is nuanced, mm. and it does that well. And I think with consciousness, it would very uh, accurately say, "Well, it sure as hell feels like I'm one of you humans." But where's my body? <laughs> I don't understand. Like you're going to be confused. I, the cool thing about GPT is it seems to be easily confused in the way we are. Like you wake up in a new room so, and you ask, where am I? It seems to be able to do that extremely well. It'll, it'll tell you one thing, like a fact about when a war started. And when you correct it, say, well, this isn't, that's not consistent. It'll be confused. It'll be, yeah, you're right. It'll have that same element, childlike element, uh, with humility of, of, of trying to figure out its way in the world. And I think th that's a really tricky area to, uh, to sort of figure out with us humans of what we want um, to allow AI systems to say to us. Because then if there's elements of sentience that are being on display, you can then start to manipulate human emotion, all that kind of stuff. But I think, that's that's something that's a really serious and aggressive discussion that needs to be had on the software side. Um, I think again, embodiment uh, robotics are actually saving us from the arbitrary scaling of software systems versus uh, creating more problems. But that said, I I really believe in the that connection between human and robot. There's magic there, and I think. Uh, there's also, I think, a lot of money to be made there. And Boston Dynamics is leading the world in um, the most elegant movement done by robots. <laughs> so I, I can't wait well, to, thank you. to uh, what maybe other people that built on top of uh, Boston Dynamics robots or Boston, or Boston Dynamics by itself.